K.C. Singh, former Secretary, Ministry of External Affairs, Kabul Sibyl, former Foreign Secretary, Raymond Vickery, former Assistant Secretary of Commerce of the United States of America, Sadan Andhume, Resident Fellow of the American Enterprise Institute of Washington, D.C., is joining us from uh, Ahmedabad. My first question is to Christine Fair, who is Assistant Professor at Georgetown University. She's joining us on a Skype link from Washington. Uh, Ms. Fair, what do you make of what Chuck Hagel said there about India? Well, actually, if you listen to the video, um, the video is not nearly as outrageous as the response to the video has been. He's halting. He's hesitating. Um, it's also completely devoid of context. The only video I've seen is that actual part where he has made the statements that have been so inflammatory. Now, look, the reality is, historically, India is not as innocent as it says it is, and it's not as guilty as the Pakistanis say. Historically, India has had ties with the Baluch insurgents. Um, I don't think that that's something that's terribly controversial, although I suspect some Indians will think it is. Um, and, and ultimately, I think where, where Hegel went wrong was his comments where he, he said that India was causing problems for Pakistan in Afghanistan. That's not actually the Pakistani argument. And I think he should have also perhaps reflected on the unfortunate fact that the Americans haven't really taken this issue very seriously. So, for example, many of the of the India analysts in Washington, D.C. Will, will also get up in a swivet over these comments. But the fact is American intelligence has not really focused on this issue. So when they say we have no information um, suggesting that there is nothing there, the reality is they actually haven't looked. Other countries, such as, for example, the United Kingdom, have looked at India's role in Afghanistan, and they do not come to the same conclusion that many Americans have, that the Indian role is entirely uh, positive in Afghanistan. And I will say that um, even more so than the American refusal to take seriously this issue, both, and by the way, the reasons to do this are, are both um, to exculpate India from the most outrageous claims. So, for example, Pakistanis also claim that the Indians are behind the militants of the TTP in the tribal areas. They also claim that the Indians, as well as the Americans, are behind attacks in Pakistan itself. Um, so it would be useful for the Americans to take seriously these claims if for no other reason than, than the Americans could feel fairly confident about how they bound the problem set. No, as I are. said, India is not as innocent as it says, but it surely is not as guilty as the Pakistanis claim. Let's, let's get a second perspective. You see, there are two issues to look at here. I'd like to go to Sadana next on this. One issue is, uh, uh, you know, about the fact that he hasn't got any strong basis to his claims. Where is the evidence that India is uh, behind uh, attacks on Pakistan or from on Pakistan directly on, direct, indirectly on Pakistan from the Afghanistan side? The second point, which is of greater concern, is that you're going to have a U.S. Defense Secretary, Sadanand, who probably has a fairly fixed view, you know, towards India at a time when we were saying that America is finally beginning to de-hyphenate India and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. You have an incoming Defense Secretary who has a fairly strong bias. Um, let me take both of these points. Um, first of all, I have to say I disagree with my old friend, Chris Fair. Uh, the basic point is that if there is no proof, the default really is that a country is innocent of these charges. More to the point, uh, Chuck Hagel has really said things that fly in the face of official U.S. policy. You have to understand these speeches came in 2011. In 2010, President Obama had come to India and praised India's Afghanistan policy in India's parliament. So this is not a mainstream view. It's certainly not a mainstream view among India watchers in Washington. Neither is it a mainstream view in the policy community in the, in the United States. And so this, if you sort of add this on to some of his other views on other subjects, what it really gives you is a picture of this maverick character who's sort of out there with his own sort of strange views that deviate both from the views of the mainstream and deviate from the views of the administration that he's supposed to serve. And this is certainly cause for concern. It may not be the cause, it, it may not be cause for as much concern as, the, as if this was said by a sitting defense secretary, but it certainly is something that's cause for some concern. And I think the Indian Embassy is right in issuing that statement. And I think India is right in expecting a certain amount of clarification here. We haven't seen any clarification here at all. And that's, that's a point of concern. Uh, let's, get, uh, let's get Raymond Vickery in. You know, a person cannot have a 
when a person has a strong personal bias, it reflects eventually in what they do when they are in office. We know that Kissinger and Nixon had an extreme antagonism towards Indira Gandhi and India and that reflected in the role they played in the 1971 war. And that, that is only one example. You know, we cannot, New Delhi cannot completely uh, ignore what Chuck Hagel has said. There is genuine concern about it. Raymond Vickery. Well, first of all, I think it must be clear that Chuck Hagel is a friend of India. I spent three years of my life working on the U.S.-India civil nuclear deal. Chuck Hagel was a member of the Foreign Relations Committee at that time. We didn't have a stronger supporter than Chuck Hagel on it. After it went through, Chuck Hagel went to Pakistan, met with Musharraf. Musharraf said he wanted the deal that India had. And Chuck Hagel told him in no uncertain terms that it just wasn't in the cards because Pakistan didn't behave like India. Now what's really going on here is something called operations uh, research in which they're trying, the Republicans are trying to defeat the nomination up today before the Senate and they're putting out, pulling out all the stops. And what they do is go through and fly spec everything anybody has said and say, aha, I gotcha. Now on this particular uh, incident, this was at an Oklahoma University in an academic setting. His overall point had to do with the fragility of the relationships between Pakistan and Afghanistan. He did say that there were financing problems uh, that, and he Pakistan has viewed anything that India does uh, in Afghanistan as causing them a problem. So what he's trying to do and what he's done throughout his career is to step back and take a little bit broader view. I have now some Republicans can't stand that. No, they I haven't seen one single statement them on Iraq. I haven't seen a single statement in which I have heard Chuck Hagel ever comment on the fact that it is Pakistan that is keeping terrorism alive in Afghanistan. And this has been acknowledged by everyone, including the president of Pakistan. There seems to be a clear skew in the way he's thinking about it on the context issue of context. I mean, I've well, seen what that, he has said. He has that's said just not, that's in, just not that's he, just he, not he, right, Arnab. In fact, really uh, he has taken a broad view in terms of the relationship between uh, Christine, India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Uh, this is something which uh, has come up at the last minute uh, from a I, very right-wing source in the Washington I, press, uh, the Washington Free no, Beacon, no, one sec, one sec, prides let's, itself on fighting the well, I, 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 wing. I, I'm coming to you, Christy. No, my uh, Casey Singh and uh, Casey Singh and Kamal Subal, I'm just coming to you. I want to go back to, to Christine here. The statement is very clear, Christine. He says India has over the years financed problems for Pakistan. India has for some time used like Afghanistan as a second front. The, the, the issue is actually using Afghanistan as a place to harass Pakistan in Baluchistan. So as I said in my opening statement, he, he was wrong in terms of the location of the challenge. But in terms of the overall, if you look at the context of the talk, he was trying to explain clearly to an audience what is the issue between India and Pakistan and Afghanistan. That was very clearly the intent. So there wasn't this malicious intent that the Indian media has, has seeded into this. And as has already been noted, he's not a foe of India. But he was trying to explain to a relatively um, well. to a relatively jejun audience about South Asian complexity, and he himself got some of the details wrong. But the, the overriding but concern that, that Pakistan has about Afghanistan being used by India to sow discord in Baluchistan is A, not new, I and, and oh, by the way, it's part of the historical record. I want the you to... between the Indians and the Baluch insurgents, this is not rocket the, science. It's no, not no, no, new. No, no. And see, see that what? we're pretending that it's even not real is, is almost preposterous. No, no. I want you to... I want you to... Be, now, I'll get in the, the, the senior diplomats from India. But, Christine, before I do that, I want you to explain your comment. Where you say What's that on? India is not as uh, innocent 
as is being okay, made out to be by some look, people. Explain explain all, what you I'm mean by India is not as innocent Where on India Baluchistan. Is, you want me to explain the position, then let me do it and don't cut me off. Where India has actually been very active is in the parts of Afghanistan, which are actually most inflammatory to the Pakistanis. So, for example, I've been to Kunar. I don't know if you have been. And the Indians chose to build schools right on the border of Kunar, across from Bajur. Now, if you go and talk to the governor of Kunar at the time, as I did in 2008, he actually thought that this was a cute little Indian panga to tick off the Pakistanis. Clearly, it was provocative. Now, provocative, is, this, okay. is, this on the, is this on the verge of supporting terrorism? No. But the problem that the Pakistanis have with India, and I think for the, is the one place where the Pakistanis are not completely out to lunch, is on this issue of Baluchistan, the historical ties between Baluch nationalist insurgents in India and Afghanistan are clear. So where Hegel real and I, and I just I, I want to take this back from Hegel. If you listen to the video, it's not as outrageous. He clearly is wrong on the facts. He's, well, he's not trying to malign India. He's trying to explain why it is that India has equities in Afghanistan and why does Pakistan care about India in Afghanistan? Now, well, to the American Casey. audience, that's a, that's an important puzzle. Well, he that, gets the facts wrong. Well, but I, I think I, maligning uh, him and the way in which this show is is not really appropriate. No, no. You see, the, I, I, I also think that then he should, uh, you know, perhaps get himself a little more educated on what Pakistan has been doing, the if, human if rights I, abuses it carries ask, out in Balochistan. I, I got KC Singh, Christine. Pakistan, <laughs> Christine, let's get KC Singh on this. Let's get KC <laughs> Singh to, to counter that view. I'm coming to you, Kawal Sibal. KC, your response to Christine Fair. Yes, Arnab, I think, you know, this is basically Pakistani propaganda which has been going around, which Mr. Hegel has lapped up. And the surprising thing is that he's not just an innocent Republican wandering around the, uh, the, the Congress or the Senate. He's been on an advisory, defense advisory committee of the Obama government. He's been on an intelligence advisory committee. He's distanced himself from his Republican colleagues. And that's why there are 15 of them who have taken up arms against him. Uh, they don't want his own party does not want him nominated so therefore he's acted as a contrarian he's been distancing himself from the republicans but distancing yourself doesn't mean you take make such outrageous claims and if he's done that if he's done it innocently i mean ray is trying to explain it i think the explanation should come from the defense secretary designate it should not come uh, from other people he needs to explain it because for india the context is very important U.S. is withdrawing. India is very sensitive about what is going to happen after the withdrawal. And you do not want a defense secretary having these kinds of undigested information coming from Pakistan. And he goes on uh, presenting it. Uh, and he's stepping into the shoes of Gates, who has performed remarkably for the last uh, six, seven years, because he's understood the complexities of the region. And this kind of a charge that India is supporting the Baluchistan is there. It's an old charge. Pakistan has been... Firstly, Pakistan is saying we got tens of consulates in Afghanistan when we only have four. And if we are training anybody, I have heard Americans say this in track two events, senior Americans, that they have never found any camp which Indians can run in the southern part of Afghanistan. In any case, wherever the American troops are not there, Pakistan's friends, the Taliban are there. So there is no place for India to run a camp or to run any operations in the southern part of Afghanistan. So it's really surprising this kind of argument. I what, think he's why? just taken it up, uh, taken it from some Pakistani source, and he's just uh, marketing it. Well, I think it's important he clarify. What do you think, Kaval Sibal? Should he clarify where he stands? Well, I suppose uh, <clears throat> he will get an opportunity to clear it, and he would need to do so when, when he becomes Defense Secretary, because uh, after our, the Indian Embassy in Washington, even while acknowledging that uh, he's considered a friend of India, and supported India on the Indo-US nuclear deal, uh, they have, uh, dis they have uh, criticized his statement uh, fairly strongly. And he would have uh, noticed that and absorbed that. And I'm sure when he assumes responsibility as Defense Secretary, given the stakes involved in the relationship with India, uh, he will uh, make the necessary amends. But uh, let me put the things in perspective a little bit. Uh, one that uh, Chuck Hegel is not the only one who had uh, serious doubts about India's policy in Afghanistan and who bought into uh, Pakistani propaganda uh, about the strategic threat to Pakistan from Indian presence in Afghanistan. For virtually half the term, first term of Obama, Obama himself bought this. 
and Secretary of State Clinton also yeah. bought it. And the Americans were counseling us uh, to lower our presence in Afghanistan, not get involved in military training. Uh, and in fact, initially even wanting explanations from us about our consulates and this and that. Subsequently, when there were problems between Pakistan and United States, and Pakistan's duplicity became more and more clear, and the Raymond uh, Davis affair occurred, and then Osama bin Laden, uh, of course, was discovered <laughs> in a military cantonment in Islamabad. The whole perspective of the United States changed, and the United States and President Obama and Secretary Hillary Clinton became very supportive of India's presence in Afghanistan to the point of even discussing with us joint, uh, joint programs, development programs in Afghanistan and encouraging us, in fact, to train uh, the Afghan National Security Forces. The fact that we signed this strategic agreement with Afghanistan could not have been done without a green light from the Americans because it also talks about equipping and training the Afghan National uh, Security Forces. Uh, so I do not, therefore, uh, am totally surprised by what uh, Chuck Hagel, uh, what Chuck, Chuck, Hagel, uh, Chuck Hagel said. Now, we have a problem, of course. The problem is that the uh, United States is moving out of Afghanistan. Uh, there is a dialogue with the Taliban, which the British are encouraging. And all so, this is being facilitated by Pakistan. And therefore, in, in this process, they will give a lot of weight so uh, to uh, Pakistani so, so concerns. The, and, and we have now a Secretary of State. No, let me complete this. Now we have a Secretary of State in the United States who was the sponsor of the Kerry Luger bill and who has a certain view of relationship with Pakistan and, uh, in fact, is supportive of arms assistance uh, to Pakistan. So we have to deal with the new situation here where we have a Secretary of State and a Secretary of Defense uh, who have certain views on so, Pakistan and, and its importance, which will be problematic for us to okay, so deal with. But at the end of it, I think the India relationship will weigh very heavily with them yes. and with Obama, and they'll find some ways to correct the misperceptions well, that I think are growing. Th that's the point. That there is a, there is clearly, there is a lot at stake. Raymond Vickery, Christine Fell, let me come back to you. First, you, Raymond Vickery. The question here is that if there is a relationship in India which means something to America, then you cannot have a change of position. Around the same time in 2011, that Chuck Hagel was calling India a state that, you know, sort of is behind attacks in Pakistan through Afghanistan. Obama, in October 2011, was clearly saying that it's the Pakistanis who are dealing with quote-unquote unsavory characters who they think might end up regaining power in Afghanistan after coalition forces have left it. So, you know, Obama is still well, the president. What, what we are saying here yeah, it, is that we I, want I to... Don't yeah. I don't think that I, I don't think anything that Chuck Hagel said is contrary to what the president oh, yes, uh, has said. Uh, Chuck Hagel never did say anything about uh, f uh, financing problems in Pakistan from Afghanistan. That's been something that Pakistan propaganda has tried to draw out. All he said was that uh, that there was an involvement in financing from India and that was viewed as financing problems in Afghanistan and the Pakistanis have well, uh, well, have taken that view uh, for a long time. Well, let me just what, jump in. What, what the whole point was, what the point was the fragility of the relations between Pakistan and Afghanistan no, and no, to think no, that no, India just, well, is not a part of that uh, that picture is is absurd. I, I'm getting a, con a, a rebuttal to what you're saying from Sadanand who's uh, who's from Ahmedabad. Yes, Sadanand. Well, I just want to point out that, you know, the, the view that India by building schools or helping the Pakistanis build a parliament, that India is somehow doing something extremely inflammatory is a paranoid Pakistani view. Ah. That is not a view that should be view, that sh that should be stated objectively. So if he's saying this, you should qualify it. And I think a much more uh, mainstream view and a much more rational view is to point out that India has in fact played a stabilizing role in Afghanistan. It has tried to help put Afghanistan back on its feet. And these claims that any little thing India does, such as building a high school or building a parliament or building a hospital for someone, that this is somehow some, some awful red rag for the Pakistanis, 
um, that is not a claim that should be taken okay. at face value. And if it appears as though Chuck okay. Nagel is Sadhana taking such claims at face value, Sadhana that Christine's is a problem. Sadhana and Christine's responding from Washington. Go ahead, Christine. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I think that's also a caricatured view. I think everyone knows that, that Pakistan um, exaggerates greatly what India does in Afghanistan and what its nefarious implications are for Pakistan. So, I mean, let's put that on the table. Everyone knows that, for example, the so-called mushrooming consulates is absurd. The problem is, is that not every mm -hmm. claim the Pakistanis make is in fact completely wrong. So I'm gonna keep my, my remarks to the issue of, issue of Baluchistan. Sadhanand, I disagree with you. There are American officials, in fact, I've had meetings with them this week where they are increasingly concerned about the, the potential um, of India to exacerbate the Balochistan affair, particularly going forward if this negotiation with the Taliban should proceed with Pakistan because the Northern Alliance, I've met Northern Alliance people okay, see, see. who have said very clearly that if this goes forward, we're yeah. taking the war to Pakistan and we're going to do it with India in Balochistan. And what Af what Afghans say and people in Afghanistan say well, is that I... Indians are not in Balochistan but rather that they're working with the um, Afghan intelligence I, service, the NDS, Christine, to work with Baluch insurgents. Now, by the way, these are nothing, Christine, none of these statements are things that Christine, Hegel actually said. Christine. So I think the reaction to what Hegel said is a little bit absurd. But, Christine, I'd but like I also to think that we should look at how Pakistan, Christine, if we're I'd gonna like to take Pakistan seriously as a regional source of instability, we also have well, to understand why it does what it, it does. Is. It is, and, and none other. I get KC to respond to you. I just like to make a limited point to you, Christine Fair, that none apart from the Human Rights Commission on Pakistan has completely exposed what it calls the disgusting violations of human rights in Baluchistan. It is not by an Indian sides, creation. The, the maximum number, 210 no political activists, 19 journalists, three human rights defenders losing their lives in 2012. This is exposed by the Pakistan Human Rights Commission. The greatest form of terrorism in, pa in Baluchistan is practiced by the Pakistani forces. I get KC Singh to respond to you. Uh, KC Singh, uh, is, is Chris, your response to Christine Fair? There's a lot of difference. Yeah. Yes, I am only I am going to supplement what Mr. Sibyl said that the realignment of the thought processes in Washington where they think they need uh, an orderly withdrawal from Afghanistan and they need the goodwill of Pakistan is I think fueling this uh, speculation. Now what she is saying is they are saying this is what India might do. What Chuck Hegel is saying this is what India has been doing. Now, there's a lot of difference between that's what you exactly his think point. India what might do. What Hegel said factually was incorrect. You are imputing things to Hegel that he actually didn't so, say. So, Christine, this if he says something... This discussion is a meta discussion. That's no, why but, it's so but preposterous. But if he's saying, Hegel Christine, didn't say any of this. Yeah. If he's Let saying, it. Christine, that he said huh? something incorrect by saying we are financing problems from Pakistan on that side of the border, the limited point is his view is completely inconsistent with what his own president's point of view is. So all India is asking for, and I'd like to go back to Raymond Vickery on this, India is asking to know whose line to believe in. Do we believe Obama or do we believe Chuck Hagel? And if Chuck Hagel is not to be believed, why doesn't he clarify and then we we'll move on? You believe both of them, but what you don't believe is the 11th hour attempt by the Republicans to smear Chuck Hagel. That's what's going on here. This is not a part really of international kind of relations. This is a domestic affair trying to stop a vote today on behalf of Republicans who know that the Indian American community voted overwhelmingly okay, okay. for Barack Obama. I and if they can somehow so put a wedge in second. there by taking two sentences that out of context, that they will have been okay. able Sorry. to defeat this kind of, uh, of domination. Two points of view coming in. Not, uh, I, the I, I look at this I, at all. Uh, Sadhanan, Sadhanan, before I come to you, I saw Kawal Suwal raise his hand. Before I lose the satellite link yeah, with Raymond uh, Bickery, Kamal Sibal's response to the former Assistant Secretary. No, I, I think uh, Chuck Hegel uh, made this statement almost two years ago. I don't know if he's made any statement of this kind uh, subsequently. But uh, given the fact that he's going to become Secretary of Defense, he needs to very quickly clarify his broad thinking about India's role in Afghanistan and how he sees it vis-a-vis uh, -vis Pakistan as well as Pakistan's role and uh, the whole issue of the dialogue with Taliban and whether this dialogue should be conducted with some red lines in view. This is, this is very important and I have a feeling 
that they will do it. But nevertheless, we have to feel concerned that uh, given the fact that they are dependent on Pakistan to extricate themselves in good order, they may be compelled to defer to some of, the, some of Pakistan's paranoia. But having said that, let me make another point which I think is very important. Firstly, the Pakistanis themselves have told me and others that they know exactly who the rebels are, the small groups of rebels are in Balochistan, where their locations are, but the army is not willing to move against them because there is an interdiction on military operations in Balochistan. They don't want to do it unless the civilian government gives them the green light to do so. Now, if they themselves say that they have identified the groups and they know where the camps are and they can take them out when they want, then what is this big fuss about India so-called destabilizing Pakistan ah. uh, through Balochistan? This is utter nonsense. And finally, let me say, if Pakistan can go and arm the Sri Lankan army when there was a civil war going on there, when they have a huge presence in Nepal, when they are active in, uh, in Bangladesh, and when China has such a huge presence in Pakistan, I can't understand what this great fuss is that if India is in Afghanistan, therefore somehow Pakistan is getting exposed in terms of the threat we pose to them in Balochistan. They have not given any evidence. Pakistan has not given any evidence bilaterally or to the international community of Indian involvement in Balochistan. This is all nonsense. And I think it's a pity that a person as, as well informed as Jack Hegel should have bought into this nonsense. Well, you know, there are very strong views here that are, you know, across India at what Chuck Hegel has said. I think the bottom line is this, uh, Raymond, uh, is that, you know, to, to call India a country that is virtually exporting attacks into Pakistan, which is a sum and substance. Now, Chuck Hegel can try and clarify it two years later, but that's no, a sum that, and substance of what he's saying. Sum and, that's not the sum and substance of what he said. The whole point of his statement was the fragility of relations between Afghanistan and Pakistan. India is a Why? part of what's going on in the region. It is and not uh, correct at all to say yes. that, in fact, uh, Chuck Hagel has accused of fomenting that kind of activity uh, in, in Pakistan. That, well, that's I, just not right. Well, well it will. I, 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 uh, I, perhaps... Sadhanan, Sadhanan, before you come in, perhaps it will do some yeah, good I just, for India-U.S. relations in the larger interest of India-U.S. relations for Chuck Hagel to clarify what he said. Sadhanan felt that your, you, you know, your observation, he had problems with your observation saying this has got to do with domestic American politics. Uh, yes, Sadhanan, to Raymond. Of course, it has an, of course it has to do with Ameri domestic American politics, but that's the role of the opposition party. So I don't see why this, you, you, instead of shooting the messenger, we should focus on the message. Lastly, I agree with you entirely that this is just a question of clarification. What Senator Hegel can easily do is clarify that he sees the Indian role in Afghanistan in similar terms as President Obama. That's which all. Is that a, it's a broadly positive force in Afghanistan. If he clarifies this, this will go away. And I don't see what the fuss is about, is, is about providing a simple okay. clarification. In the absence of that clarification, it's perfectly fair for people to look at those comments and see them with a certain degree of worry. There, there, is, there is a great apprehension, I'd like to also say this, that the recent changes in the State Department and the new Defense Secretary of America, uh, there is concern about, uh, you know, whether there will be a change in, in the India-US relationship with that. Perhaps what is happening over Chuck Hagel is a reflection of that. Let's see if he clarifies. No, Ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's not accurate. Ed. That's not accurate. Well, there is at an all. apprehension. I in said. fact, the relationship that is, is very strong. Well, I'm, I'm sure is it is on course. That, I'm sure it is. That's a that's a complete pipe dream. I, I, I I'm sure that's it is. Not, there's I, no fact to that. I am sure it is. And a little bit of a clarification will make it even stronger. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for chatting with me on the news tonight. Thank you very much.